Wait, 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 why is everybody? I'm so confused. What's happening here? I, I, I've been told to bring you down. Okay, okay. I'm coming down. I've been told to bring you down. I'm coming down. Okay, so thank you. Yeah, it's upside down. <laughs> it's in English. Can it be in Russian? It's good. Yeah, really? Wow. Oh, I tried. Thank you. Speech, Thank you. speech, 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 speech. Oh, let's have a wonderful show. Nobody get injured. That's the most important thing. All right. I guess I'll uh, do my XPW Here Comes Revenge review from my angle as the photographer and the birthday boy um listen to rob's show last night um while i was editing and uh whew, man he's got a lot to say it's a lot that happened um it's amazing within a year how xpw has come back grown became viral and uh how many people are triggered by it? It's 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 kind of funny to me that grown people get so triggered by certain things, right? It's because people that haven't stepped outside, one, their own city, let alone their own living room or basement, seem to have the most opinions about the world politics and what's good and fair and what's not without knowing any facts. This is the beauty of, I guess, United States, right? We're so quick to judge and so quick to give our opinion, which matters to only us. Nobody else gives a shit about our opinion, and, but we think they do because of MySpace and Twitter and Instagram and all that bullshit. Um, and uh, your opinion doesn't matter. It matters only to a point where you want to support something, support it. If you don't, then move on. But for you to try to cancel people for the political views, for uh, what they consider entertaining, is typical American bullshit. Step outside the border of the United States and see what happens. I'm triggered today because I saw a stupid meme where it, said, where it had like a dove wing for uh, liberals and uh, a Nazi wing for conservatives. And the fact that these crazy woke losers compare Nazism to what we have in the United States is completely crazy. And this is the problem with the politics that gives this freedom to people to think that. Go learn your fucking history, how many people died during, during World War II under the Nazi regime. I had family friends get murdered by Ukrainian Nazi sympathizers. So fuck you and calling anybody Nazi these days. Fuck you for supporting a country that's gotten $100 billion from us while we have starving people in this country. Fuck you for that. Learn your history. Learn world politics before you jump and start waving flags or pointing fingers. Now, let's get back to uh, XPW. Here comes revenge. Um, so this was my birthday weekend and... Um, my birthday was March 23rd. The show was March 25th. Honestly, I was hoping that Rob was going to fly me out early, fly me out late, so I could enjoy and party, partake in the XPW wrestlers' shenanigans, even though I don't do any shenanigans in my personal life whatsoever. So I was like, I was like, ah, you know, I'll drink a little bit with them. Maybe I'll smoke a little bit with them. I will not be doing coke with anybody. I'm too old for that shit. Never done it. Never will. I hardly smoke weed. I never smoke weed. I eat an edible here once in a while, and I don't drink. So um, that was the plan. But then Rob surprised me with a late flight. Fucking Roberto Negro. So I flew in. Uh, the cool thing is I flew with uh, Sage, Sin Supreme, or now Becky Hate, and Kyle. 
So we both flew in. Uh, we all flew in at the same time. We landed in New Jersey. We were supposed to land at like 12.50. I think we la- landed at midnight on, uh, thir- on Friday night. So I was hoping to be at the hotel by 1, you know, get some rest, unpack some equipment, prep some equipment, whatever it may be, because I've been up since, gosh, probably 6.30 in the morning or so. If there was only 9 or uh, nine our time, you know, but still, like it's midnight local and uh, I was I was hoping to be in bed at a decent hour because the next day was going to be crazy oh my god I was looking forward to the whole show just to see what was lined up and uh, um, I always get very nervous before every show I was thinking about like oh my god am I going to fuck something up is my camera going to be working is my lights going to be everything I brought x lights uh, these lights that are shaped like an x to the show too I was like I'm going to try to backlight with them and um, do something completely different than I usually do. I usually shoot towards um, the the end of the hallway with one black backdrop. But this time I brought two black backdrops and I basically made like a cove, a black cove cave um, where I usually would shoot into. So I basically separated myself from the rest of the hallway, which is the locker room. I put a couple of pink... Um, arrows pointing where to enter through the middle. I had two X lights as backlights. I want to do more like a music video type of feel to the to the backstage pictures. Uh, my concern was having enough front light to uh, to match even remotely to the backlights because those lights are so powerful and, and they're not on dimmers and they can't be dimmed because they're not actual film lights so um originally i was going to do a ring light from the front and i'm like that's not going to work so what i did was i i i manipulated my lighting that i did have to make it work properly i also brought a little a little film a point and shoot film camera with uh, a 35 millimeter camera with a flash on it and my goal was to take pictures of every restaurant everyone that i can with um with one or two pictures, just uh, with a flash, on camera flash, for this with this little film camera, and just see what it looks like. It might look kind of cool, it might look stupid, it might look cool. Who knows? We'll see. Anyways, um, uh, we <laughs> landed at a little after midnight, and uh, went got my luggage, um, and then um, as we walked down to the shuttle area, there's Big F and Joe. We're like, oh, hey, what's up? You know, he's like, Masada's here, but. His luggage is gonna be for another hour. Lou Dark just landed, so we're like, oh, we'll just we'll just all wait for her. So the shuttle comes for the hotel, and they we're like, well, she's gonna be here soon. So can you wait? And the guy, like, okay, he's gonna wait. So ten minutes, fifteen minutes go by. Uh, they tell her to take the wrong train to the shuttle area. So the guy's about to leave. I give him five bucks. I'm like, hey, can you stick around? There's nobody else for you to drive around. So he's like, yeah, that's totally fine. And literally, it was like 35, 40 minutes, um, and then he had to go because his, his shuttle was filled with people, and uh, he left. So then Lou Dark shows up, and uh, we all jump on the next shuttle, and we go to the hotel. And now it's closer to, to 1 now, I guess, and 1, 1.30 maybe. And maybe. Uh, so we're there, and, there, and we're, we're trying to reach Rob and Danny to get our room keys, and they're like, we're in a lobby. Where the fuck are you? We're like, we're in a lobby. Where the fuck are you? Are we like in a different dimensions? What's happening here? Well, I guess there's two Hamptons. And God forbid, either shuttle driver lets us know that there are two different shuttles because there are two different Hamptons and we're at the wrong hotel. So this shuttle guy hears us talking about it. He's like, oh, I could take you guys back to the airport. We're like, no, we're not going back to the airport and wait for the other shuttle. And then get to the to the hotel, so so Big F and Joe greased them up. You know now I wonder how Big F and Joe actually greased them up because, considering what he did to the body and and body's wiener later in the show, makes you wonder what kind of greasing Big F and Joe actually did for the shuttle driver who took us straight to our hotel room, to our to our hotel. So uh, we got to our hotel probably close to like two. 215 maybe um and again i was uh, rooming with big f and joe again fast forward to later on the show if i only known what big f and joe was into supposedly or maybe it's just part of his act 
uh, it would have been either a really uncomfortable room situation or very comfortable, if you know what I mean. And anyways, uh, it's always great to room with Joe because uh, he's such a, a normal, grounded dude that the stories we share are awesome, you know. And he actually reached out to me a few days before coming out uh, from across the pond um, and asked me, uh, what size shirt I wear because it was my birthday. So I was like, oh man, he's going to get me one of those shirts that I fucking love. I love his shirts. I mean, like he's got really, really, really fucking cool shirts. So um, we actually wound up staying up till almost five in the morning just talking. We didn't go see anybody. Uh, Necro was next door. Feeders down was Sage. But we're like, man, let's just, just chill and talk, you know? And um, we hung out, we, we talked about life, talked about all a bunch of shit, about wrestling, and about porn, and um, went to bed. Um, by the time I woke up, he was gone already. He went to breakfast. Um, I missed breakfast. Damn it, I always, I, I, to me, it's like, I rather wake up early, go get free breakfast, and go back to sleep. And I didn't realize that hotel had breakfast uh, because there were no signs when, I, when we arrived that there's free, wonderful continental breakfast. So I missed out on that. But I did get some rest. And um, the plan was to, to go to the venue early enough where I could set up and relax for a little bit. So, um, and it was like my, you know, my birthday and everybody's saying happy birthday. It was really nice. I mean, like the way the XPW locker room and the crew embraced me you know I'm, a, I'm new to wrestling you know like I'm, i was the fan years ago and did a little bit of stuff but i didn't socialize with any wrestlers it was uh you know i just shot some stuff and moved on with my life and um so uh i went out to the lobby saw rob and uh, his cousin and uh, they were heading to the venue and then uh cat martini took me to breakfast lunch so her and i went to lunch we we sat and talked about plans for xpw life all kinds of stuff it's just wonderful i've known her for gosh 12 years or so maybe but we've never actually sat and just talked uh i mean years ago in the industry we did a little bit like on sets and uh, different events but never just like one-on-one -on -one. I, I don't think we've ever actually we did last show show in jersey but not like this so um it was uh it was good and then um i had to uh head over to the venue so i ubered over to the venue with all my stuff i was like really worried about it was raining i was worried about um how the lighting is going to work because it's crucial to get these pictures you know and um and the backstage pictures are usually uh, something I look forward to, and it's uh, the most. It's the hardest because I have to wrangle wrestlers and basically beg some of them to come and shoot. Not because they don't want to, it's just that they're busy uh, doing their thing, you know. And so uh, I got to the venue, and that's when I realized, like, like I'm, I'm going to set it up opposite the way I used to, where there's double. Oh, excuse me. Oh, there's double black wall. To, so basically. I had two 10 by 10 uh, backdrops and I um, I hung them in the middle was, was so the wrestlers could walk in, basically like a curtain in the, uh, with an opening. Um, and then I had it coming around and uh, pinned to the wall. So it created this black cave of sorts. And actually, ha uh, um, Hardcore helped me out. He's a wonderful dude. We, we This first time we actually talked about what he does for a living and, and what his training is. And it's, it's actually really fucking cool. That I also talked to the referee that I keep, Mike. Mike, I think it's Mike. I always forget his name. He's got the coolest thing. He's got the coolest fucking mustache and he's got a great style to him. He's a horror guy. Uh, so we wound up just shooting the shit while uh, Hardcore helped me set up because I'm afraid of heights. So he was up on the chair clipping everything up for me. Um, once that was done, I started doing my lighting tests because I wanted to make sure everything was perfect. You know, So I, I set up all my lights, um, went outside and... Um, as I'm outside, I ran into some fans and we wound up chatting. Some were asking me questions about dumb shit in my life that, that is no longer in my life. And uh, um, they were pretty much aware of the situation because anybody who's anybody that knows me knows the, the, the stuff that I do, how I do it, who I promote, who I hang out with and things like that. And, you know, and and what I actually do for people, so, <laughs> uh, and what people do to me or for me, uh, or with me, I should say, as, as well. Um, so it was great to see some of these, some of these guys that I haven't, you know, I only see, like, when they, when they um, 
come out to uh, uh, when I come out to Jersey. So uh, once all that was set up and I did a couple of light tests, the show was pretty close to 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 uh, starting, and then Danny Manchichi comes up to me and goes, "Hey, come here." I'm like, "What?" He goes, "Stand right here." I'm like, "What do you mean stand right here?" He's like, "Just just don't go anywhere." And then he's like sending everybody away. I'm like, "Oh oh, this is the moment." Danny Munchich is going to give me a birthday BJ. Yeah. Send everybody away so we can have a private time. I get it. So I start rolling my GoPro thinking, like, oh, here's my first uh, POV for, uh, for OnlyFans, right? No. Even better. So Danny starts walking me down the stairs to the back area, uh, the gorilla area where all the, 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 the monitors are and all the wrestlers are. And... I'm recording this. I'm like, what's going on? I got the GoPro going. I got uh, my cell phone going. And I shit you not, they all were there to sing me happy birthday with a giant cake that said happy birthday Slava on it, uh, a birthday card that everybody signed. It was very emotional. I get emotional thinking about it now because it's been a rough six months and this birthday was kind of like, uh, seriously, the the whole holiday season has been turned upside down for me because the, where my life was heading to what my life became in the last three months, unbeknownst to me, what was going on and, and how, um, everything was turned upside down and in, 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 in turmoil, well, that I didn't ask for, didn't volunteer. It was just thrown in my lap then pulled, the rug right out from under me. So I was like, this was such a nice, nice relief. And you know, the thing is, and I think a lot of the uh, uh, locker room knows about it because they've seen it. They've seen what was going on and and they know how hard I work and, and what I do. So it was like their way of saying thank you. And, and that was just perfect timing. I, I literally didn't expect any of that. And inside I was like so nervous because I'm socially awkward and socially weird. And, and, uh, um, and they all sang happy birthday and, um, all I could say was like, thank you, everybody, and I hope nobody gets hurt and have a wonderful show. And that, that was it. I was just like, I don't know what else to say. You put me on the spot. I'm going to start crying more than talking. So um, it, it, was, uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was so wonderful. And I have to tell you that the first match when I was shooting, I broke down a couple of times. I kept my cool, but I just thought about like, like the shit that some people put you through and then the wonderful things that people do for you to uplift you or pull you up or even just remind you of who you are. Who you are. This is why I always post positive things and, 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 and I post encouraging things because at the end of the day, we're all human beings. At the end of the day, we need to remember that. At the end of the day, we're all going to die. And so are you going to die as an asshole that, that, that created a shitstorm across, across the plane of your life? Or are you going to be the person that's going to one by one lift people up, whether it's with a, a smile or a hello or a helping hand, whatever it may be? It's important. You know, um, when I was in the hospital for two months, the way I stayed positive was... Those encouraging texts, those encouraging messages, those DMs on social media, the comments every day that because I every day I posted something about my journey and my <laughs> my horrendous situation and gross situation in many ways, um, you know. So it was wonderful, wonderful thing to experience, and uh, you know, and uh, um, got to meet Larry Legend, who's amazing and the and the pop that larry got when he came out first of all the crowd was so on point and if anybody from la is listening to this you guys need to step up the the next la show because jersey crowd they might have been as loud if not louder than most la crowds it was pretty 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 amazing especially when larry legend came out um it was very it it it, it was kind of one of those things where you're you're there and you're going Rob's vision's coming to fruition, you know, like it, it, it's been over a year um, and uh, he's been, uh, God, doing this, you know, a, a lot of it on, on his own shoulders and and what has happened and what he's put together and, and the roster of wrestlers and people that are willing to come in. Amazing, and it and it's starting to show with every Jersey show. First show, it's kind of like, oh my goodness, there's hardly any people here. Second, we're like, wow, okay, it's getting better. This last show, it was literally felt like it was standing room only, and uh, it was wonderful. Um, the first match with uh, with Soul Taker and uh, Mister Fantastic, um, I kind of heard 
<laughs> through, you know, backstage, like, uh, how is uh, Larry Legend going to introduce the Soul Taker? And he introduced him, I think, I think he did with a hard R, um, which is actually Soul Taker's... Uh, given name to himself um so it, it was uh <laughs> it, it was very very uh uh interesting moment <laughs> because it was like oh it's gonna happen and i think the whole crowd was kind of waiting to see what will happen it is xpw now you have a black announcer with the soul taker so what's gonna happen and it happened it was uh, a <laughs> it was kind of a interesting uh moment oh let's go back to the hotel situation so by the time we got to our hotel Masada, who was waiting for an hour for his luggage, was there before us at the hotel. That's how long our journey to get from the airport to the hotel was. So, uh, yeah, that's why we got there. So we got there so late and went to sleep. And uh, the first match was really good. You know, it was, uh, it's 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 funny because you you know you have you have Mister Fantastic and 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 his gimmick, and then you have the Soul Taker, and it, it was a uh, it was a cool match. It was uh, it was always fun to watch Soul Taker and see what what he does as the Black Undertaker, or whatever you want to call him. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember what the next match was. It was either the the four-way girls match or the um, the three-way between... Uh, was it the hard body match? Anyways, it doesn't matter what order it was in. Well, let, let's, let's talk about the three-way match. Um, I was looking forward to it because I've watched J.J. Escobar videos on YouTube, and I've seen him once, and he's actually very, very polite. Very polite, very cordial very gracious um so are the other guys uh you know and um i've and and the funny thing is with uh clit osborne is it that's not clit osborne it's fucking rob kip kip osborne <laughs> uh um with last show i missed taking pictures with him and he was all bummed out even like messing because oh man when you get any pictures i'm like dude you find me you come to me please so the whole time in the locker room he goes i'm coming to you and he was like one of the first people i took pictures of because i'm like dude once the show starts Whoever didn't get pictures is fucked because I, I don't have time to wrangle people here. Um, so uh, the match was really good. You know, the, 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 the fucked up part is, is um, JJ got injured on that um, balcony spot where he jumped off the balcony with a chair. I mean, that plastic chair, that, that's, uh, you know, it's so dangerous because that thing could just literally go through him because uh, it shatters and there's jagged edges and... Um, as soon as he held, hit the ground, you knew he was hurt because of the way he reacted and the way he took his mask off. And um, it sucks because you don't want to see anybody hurt in any sort of way. Um, you know, you're doing these high fly flying maneuvers. And, and, you know, the interesting thing is most of the time people get injured, high, high flying maneuvers. They're not getting injured from a actual death match. You'll get cuts and things like that, but you're not getting something that's life threatening per se or or uh, crippling. Um and then uh, the women's match, the four way, that was that was insane. It, it was like it, again, it was kind of like a war zone. You know, you try to stay out of the way and and uh, and watch from afar. And I wanted to see where it goes because Sage is now Becky Hate, and uh, she's uh, um, you know she's she's the the the, the Becky. The Becky who hates, and uh, she she cut a really cool promo on Rob, and uh, Rob yelled back at her, and I'm listening to Rob yelling. I'm going like, oh man, this is like the old Rob I remember. Rob Rob is Rob is coming back. The, the Rob Black persona is coming back, or at least it's being opened up a little more as as it used to be. And uh, um, the match was really cool. It was it was um, it was a, it was a lot going on there it was, it was hard to follow as as a photographer i'm sure the same goes for the video guys cuz it, it was just all over the place but uh, it was it was a fun match it was a fun man- match to watch it's a fun match to shoot we, i got some really cool um, angles of of the of the girls stapling each other dollar bills to each other and uh, uh, that's always a uh, visually stunning to look at um, <laughs> especially when women are uh, staple gunning dollar bills to each other's faces <laughs> it gets it gets like oh okay that happened um but uh um let's talk i want to talk about the match the match that went viral and i didn't realize it was viral because i'm just running around shooting that i start hearing rumblings backstage that the match um went viral and i'm like for what? Because it, when I'm shooting, it's hard to tell what is really happening. I'm just, especially when spots like that, and Hardbody and Big F and Joe, my roomie, um, 
was supposed to fight the last show and couldn't because Hard Body's dad had his uh, stroke and his leg situation. So um, they've been playing this up for a while. And then uh, the, I, I just, you know, Body takes such a beating every match. And Joe's so big and so rough. I'm like, man, this is going to be brutal. Because last time Body fought was what? Um, uh, who did Body fight? Uh, Necro Butcher. Got destroyed by Necro. He fought Drake. Got destroyed by Drake. I'm trying to remember who he fought in the last Jersey show. But I don't think he wins. I think he just gets his ass whooped every time. He probably likes it. It's kind of like foreplay for the guy, I guess, right? I'm sorry, for for, for them. And um, uh, then all of a sudden, I'm watching this match, and body's like gushing blood. I'm like going, oh, visually, yeah. Just getting those shots, you know, because it's so stunning, the crimson mask. Um, and all of a sudden, Joe starts pulling his pants, uh, shorts and underwear uh, off of body's body. I'm like, I said, well, what's happening here? And all of a sudden, I'm like, is that his wiener? Is that body's wiener hanging out? I'm like, wait, wait, can we show that? Wait, wait. oh, it's right. It's streamxpw.com. Yes, of course we can show that. Uh, but but should we show that? Oh, my God, this is, it, it's insane. So um, I, I was kind of shocked by the kind of like a majority of people because I didn't know about it. And then I'm like, not just touching it, not just pulling at it. What is he going to do? What's he? And then I'm like, Wait, he's doing something, something to to it to body's dick, and, uh, and then all of a sudden I hear the crowd going ah, and I'm like oh, something bad just happened, and uh, um, eh, and then there was there was a syringe stuck in body's dick. Um, I I just kept snapping away, and I have one picture that's really cool because it's body's butt towards my camera, and all you see between his legs is syringe hanging. <laughs> you don't see his dick, you see the syringe hanging. It's actually a pretty funny shot. Um, yeah, that happened. And a lot of uh, people that are super sensitive lost their minds. The, the irony of the whole thing is is that the people that lost their minds on social media are the same people that are super wokesters who are like, everybody's equal, everybody's that. But these are the same people that love watching death matches where men beat on women. So who are you catering that to, right? Also, the same people like, you know, you could be called any pronoun you want. Well, body is that. Body is bisexual. He he's trans. He's he's uh, calls himself by pronouns. Yet, if he does something like that, all of a sudden you lose your mind over it. Why? Uh, if a if a woman pulled her tits out, another girl's tits out, and stuck a needle through it, these guys would be like, yeah, this is amazing. Ah, titties, 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 needles through titties. Yeah. But, and we've seen wrestling women getting skewers through their faces, right? So all of a sudden, this is bad. Oh, it's because it's XPW. Not because he's, he's, uh, call, he's trans or whatever he calls himself. Um, and that happened. And it's funny to me, the hypocrisy of the woke community is that they pick and choose. Again, going back to that stupid fucking meme. You pick and choose what you you're, you are offended by. Our president should offend fucking everyone way more, way more than Donald Trump. Under Donald Trump, we had a great economy. Under Donald Trump, we didn't have any wars. Under Donald Trump, somebody started a fucking pandemic, causing the economy to tank and everything else. Only thing Donald Trump was at fault for is being a dumb fucking mouth and saying dumb fucking shit during the protests. And yes, and during the fucking riots. You know, and, and that's the funny thing is, so people would just attack him for that. Yet Biden has given $100 billion to Ukraine, which is pretty much money laundering. And they were the top money laundering country for the West before this happened. Putin's not a fucking saint. Neither Zelensky. Zelensky's as evil as fucking Putin, except he's a wolf in sheep's clothing. That's He's literally sheep for our government, for the Biden administration. Zelensky's the sheep, but he's a wolf in that fucking clothing. Period. I'm fucking Russian Jew who grew up in Ukraine. I know. I know. And that's what pisses me off about this woke culture is that woke doesn't mean woke. It means uneducated and clueless to the real world problems. Because you choose what offends you when the rest of the world is dying from real world problems. You know, and that's a sad homelessness in our country. Yet Biden, who who's way more embarrassing to me than Trump ever was, sends a hundred billion dollars over there. His son, that it for how many 
for how many years CNN was like, no, he doesn't do anything. It's Donald Trump Jr. And then all this stuff about Hunter Biden comes out. At some point, that meme should be reversed because liberals are actually, if you want to call anybody Nazis or fascists, liberals are that. Because God forbid you have a fucking opinion that's opposite of somebody. Both sides are fucking ridiculous. Both uber left, uber right, morons. People in the middle get it. The problem is the loudest ones are on the right, the loudest ones are on the left, and that's the problem. So the whole body thing is, it, it, you know, and here's the thing. For all these stupid people that keep talking about it, what does that do? It lets pe people want to watch XPW now. It's that whole Howard Stern theory. You know, Howard Stern fans listen for one hour. Howard Stern haters listen for over two hours. Like Rob talks about it on this radio show. There's, it's hate listening. What is he going to say now? What is, how is he going to offend me this time again? You know, that's basically what it is. I want to be offended, so I'm going to listen. That's literally what it is. Um, so uh, it's funny to me that, that that became the big thing. Oh, a syringe through a penis. Okay, it's on Rob's streaming service. It's not on Fight. It's not anywhere but Rob's streaming service. And this obviously why Rob did it. So he can control his own content and not have fallback. Uh, you know, and, and if uh, people that get offended want to talk about it, more power to them because it goes viral. My brother in LA who's not watching this, who used to be part of the original XPW, sends me a screenshot from Reddit that says, wrestler takes syringe through penis. It was viral during the show. Like the previous show, the fact that people have a problem with the Mega Maga. Mega Maga faction are heels. It's storytelling, people. It's live action movies, as Rob calls it, live action movies. And um, people get offended by it. When you watch an actual movie in the theater, do you get offended by it? No, you just don't go and watch the movie that you are not interested in. You don't go and protest that movie. Who cares? Let people enjoy their entertainment. So why is wrestling different? It's form of entertainment. You don't like it? Turn it off. Don't put your money in that uh, in that promotions or in that theaters or in that production company's pocket because they don't produce what you want to watch. Why is wrestling so different? Oh, because the wrestling crowd has no fucking girlfriends, has no boyfriends, has no life, so they live and die by the sort of what a wrestling promoter tells them. Why? You know, that's the whole thing goes to, like, what's happening with G-Raver. G-Raver could be the nastiest man on the fucking planet. I don't know the guy. But the fact is, if he's trying to get his life together, who are we to say he can't get a second chance? You know, and... So you're going to cancel him for uh, domestic violence. How many people do you support that have domestic violence cases against them? How many people do you support that have drug problems? Or, or you don't even know the drug problems that they have. Or the stuff they do in their personal lives. You know, that's the whole point. Is that at what point, like let's say we, any of us, do something that's, you know, one mistake. A mistake. Not you know, a continuous one. Yeah, if you continuously are doing fucked up shit to fucked up people, fuck you, fuck off, don't want to deal with you, we'll never shoot you, we'll never do anything with you. And that's what I've done in, in my years in the industry and in porn. If I find out you did a mistake, well, you know, live and learn. If you continue to do them, you're my fucking no list. I will not work with you. I will not promote you. I will not endorse you. If somebody asks me, would you shoot them? No. I've done this for 21 years in porn. As soon as I find out somebody is a shit show person, they're fucking done. They could welcome to work with whoever they want, not with me. I've put so many dudes and a handful of girls on my no list in the industry because I knew that it wasn't one mistake. It was a combination of mistakes and not feeling any sorrow for them. That's the issue. If you make a mistake, you own up to it. We all, you know, I mean, in, in my industry, some of the most successful people, award winners, Legends are people have fucked up, fallen to the bottom, raised themselves up, pulled themselves out of it, admitted to it, and moved on. And everybody loved them for it. 
Same goes with wrestling. Same goes with life, period. You know, so uh, I, I have no idea about the G radio situation. Rob seems to have a lot more information that he's going to talk about on his radio show. It has nothing to do with me. Don't know. Um, I'm actually anxious to listen to it. Maybe you'll have him on the radio. That would be actually really cool. Um, but uh, rewind a little bit to the match that brought G Raver out was Drake versus U- U- Euroboy. Aero Boy, and uh, I've heard wonderful things about Aero Boy, and it's cool to watch an actual like lucha guy with a mask do death matches. You know, I was like, hey, look at that! It's like a lucha guy, but he does death matches. And uh, that match, man, every time Drake wrestles, it's it's like literally he's telling a story in a movie, and and uh, taking pictures of him is such a pleasure. One backstage, he's so accommodating and so polite and, and, and knows his poses and everything like that. But in the ring, the story he tells and the emotion in his face and in his body, priceless. Always priceless. Um, that's that's what a professional does. This is why people say he's the best in the business or one of the best in the business because of the story that he tells in the ring uh, with his emotion, with his actions with everything else and um it's it's wonderful to shoot him and and uh um to and majority of uh the wrestlers in xpw like the way they tell their story with with their emotion and their body and their actions and their positioning is is uh makes my life easier. You know, people are like, oh, look at your pictures. I'm like, yeah, but you got to remember, these are the people telling the story. I'm just capturing the moment. You know, I'll, I'll get in the right position of, because I'm, now I know kind of like what they're going to do, but it's them telling the story and I'm capturing it. That's what I am. I'm just a facilitator to capture that that frame to what the, the full story that they're uh, sharing with us. Um, so, uh yeah the, the 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 only part about the Drake match that was kind of like a, like a bummer was Arrow Boy got injured at the end you know he had a really bad gash in his hand and um all I heard from the few people as I was shooting rings I was like put pressure on it hold it down put pressure on it so he must have been the deep gash somebody actually told me that it might have been hitting an artery or vein for sure and that's why it wouldn't stop and uh, it was very deep um they tried to tape it up it still wouldn't work so when drake was doing his promo at the end of the match um he uh uh a hero boy just just put pressure on his on his hand and um that was uh you know to make sure that he was safe and uh, stayed healthy before he went to the to the emergency room to get stitched up. Um, and then um, I knew G. Raver was coming out because I took pictures of him <laughs> right before the match. So it was cool to see him come out to see people's reactions. And man, what a reaction he got! You got some people going, "Oh my God!" Who don't know this? Whatever is the story that other promotions have said about him. And people who do were like, "Ah, get out of here, boo! We don't want you here." So it was a funny. Um, uh, just to see the different roller coaster of emotion from people. Some were like super happy because they were like, oh my God, G. Raver's here, another great deathmatch guy. And others were like, oh, you're a shit show human being. Get the fuck out of here. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, but yeah, I don't know if he's going to be around. Uh, I have no idea, but it was it was cool to see that. It was another surprise. Rob's constantly throwing surprises and into into the mix, and that was definitely a surprise. I didn't know he was coming and uh, until I was backstage. I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, excuse me. That's the guy. Never met him, but that, I know I, I know what he looks like. So, um, And then, um, you know, uh, the three-way the for the Masa- Masada's Experiment World Championship match with with a beautiful new belt oh my god what a beautiful new belt um and you know it's it, it's uh, it's interesting to watch that match because you have thomas Lattimore, who's the nwa tv champ tv champ i think and uh and and you know and, and there's uh masada the expedited champ and necro butcher was the legendary deathmatch guy so to watch that match it was really cool hard hitting because all three dudes are so damn big and you know and and i have to tell you you know um as rob like said pull the curtain back all three of them have befriended me backstage and are really fucking cool dudes you know they all have stories um necro is is a pleasure to sit down and just listen to his stories because he's got stories for days he sounds like an 80 year old man with all these stories because he's lived such a long life and an interesting life even though he's younger than me um uh masada very polite 
very nice guy. Um, I can't wait to like try to go and shoot some stuff of him making knives and swords and all the other weapons that he he makes back home. Uh, and Thomas Latimer, right? Like, actually, it's funny because he, you know, again, uh, uh, when he came to the show, I'm like, hey, man, it's always a pleasure to see you. You're so kind and nice. And, and he goes, mate, not the rest of the world. They all think I'm a I'm an asshole douchebag. I'm like, really? He's like, oh, you know, he's like, oh, there's stuff from the past. I'm like, oh, I, got, I don't know. Well, in your presence, you're, you're, you're very polite, you're very kind and very nice. So that's all I give a shit about. You know, past is past. If we learn, we move on. Again, if you fucking learn from your past and you change, so what, you have to live with that fucking scarlet letter on your chest the rest of your life? That's insane to me. So um, if you live, learn, move on, that's, that's all that matters. Uh, live, learn, move on. And um, they had a great match. It was a hard hitting god man just when you're ringside you're hearing the, these these dudes just smash each other around it's it's um un, if, if you've never been to a wrestling show and you go to something like this you'll realize the physical abuse the men and women put on each other and um it's uh, pretty intense um but uh masada won and he got the new belt, and now he's got two belts, and we took some really cool pictures of him backstage with both belts. Um, the, the the setup was cool. Everybody loved those pictures. Everybody was just, like, gushing, like, oh, my God, look how cool. So I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to make him, like, make the pictures kind of, like, uh, music video style, except it's so tight in there. I mean, literally, like, we're in the in the hallway that's, what, maybe eight feet wide and trying to set up two backlights, a whole backdrop, front lights, myself. Oh, excuse me. As a wrestler, it's a lot, but um, we got some beautiful images, and then the main event, you know, that everybody was talking about the scaffold and um, everything else that goes uh, that went into it, and um, I'm very squeamish, so to watch Schlag getting stabbed all over his head and his hands and his arms and his shoulders, fuck, that was brutal. I'm like, but as a photographer, I'm there capturing the moment. It doesn't affect me as much because I'm so into the imagery of what I'm taking a picture of. If I actually just stopped and looked, I'd probably be like, okay, I need to go. But the beautiful thing is when I'm shooting, I'm so into the moment of capturing that it doesn't affect me, you know? And, uh, um, it was, it, the match was spectacular. I mean, the, 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 just when you walk out through the curtain, through the back, out of the back, to see the whole setup is like overwhelming because you're like, this is a war zone. This is going to be nuts, and um, and there's going to be a lot of damage to these guys' bodies, and and there was. I mean, especially Schlack. I mean, he's he's got what. 50 60 skewers stuck in his body all over his body oh my goodness um and that that final scaffold spot whew, through barbed wire and glass and tables and doors and uh, I'll, i guess there's no tables like there's not ta- there are you staples anymore I guess doors is the way to go now um they're probably cheaper <laughs> i imagine um but uh um I, visually, that match was stunning to look at. There's one shot that wasn't captured by me or the TV cameras. A cell phone guy got it. A, a fan got it with a cell phone because I saw the video that night. It was Schlack's on top of the scaffold, and he throws a light tube at Atticus Koger, and Atticus mid-flight punches it and just sh- it shatters. Um, and he no sells it. He just just keeps going. Just keeps going. Uh, it, it was very impressive. It was so fucking cool. It was like, that's badass. That's like man shit right there. That's really fucking badass. Um, and uh, yeah, the show was over. And then uh, I went and gra- grabbed the rest of the pictures and uh, um, started packing because I'm like, I need to get back. My flight was at 8 in the morning. And last time in New Jersey, we were in line for over an hour and a half through security. So we're like, fuck, man. S- Sage, Kyle, and I were like, man, we probably should leave like at 5.30 or something just to get to the airport by 6, hopefully, no later than 6, so we can... Um, make sure that we're okay. Uh, don't want to miss that flight. So it, it, there was no time to like really party or do anything, celebrate my birthday. I I, I had a great time. Uh, what they did for me already with the cake and, and sing happy birthday and the, 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 the birthday card was plenty. I, I didn't need anything else. That was, that was priceless for me. And, you know, and, um, so I wound up hanging, hanging out with, uh, uh, hardcore hillbilly necro, Masada, a couple other people that were in the room, and and uh, yeah, we just sat and 
shared stories, um, fun stories, uh, crazy stories, um, you know, and, uh, um, they drank. I I listened um, because I was afraid to drink or or take uh, any kind of gummies because I had to get on a flight in a few hours. So to me, it was just like, man, if I pass out, I'm not gonna wake up till the evening. Can't do that. So uh, I uh, got back to the room, packed up, and uh, I actually went to the airport before Sage and Kyle. I I left at five fifteen uh, to make sure that I checked in my luggage and. Um, was there because I didn't want them coming with me and then having to wait for me to check my luggage in and we missed the flight because, you know, they're not going to be, they're not going to leave me behind. Um, so I got there before them so I could check in my luggage, went and got some breakfast, a bagel and uh, a drink cost me $25. Mm-hmm, bagel, breakfast bagel, $25. So uh, I had my very expensive breakfast bagel and uh, we jumped on the flight, and uh, we were out cold. I mean, we none of us slept really. You know, we just we just were go we just go 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 go, and then we were out cold. Um, the funny thing is, is that <laughs> just when you think that it's all over and you're like ready to go home, we we get off the plane and we're walking, and there's like like a mountain of people stopped, and there's a police. Uh, do not cross uh, uh, tape to to our to to where we need to go. We're like, holy shit! It's gonna start packing up because as more people get off, it's gonna be less and less space for people to stand. So we're there about fifteen twenty minutes, and I guess there was like a, a suspicious package left in the bathroom. They had to go check it out, um, and it was crazy. It was like, holy shit! All these people that need to get past that point to get on planes, people trying to get to their luggage and to you know, to, to, to people who are waiting for them. And they were like going, well, that's the way to end this, uh, this journey on this trip. But it was a wonderful trip. Great show. I can't wait for the next one. The next show, California, I'm wearing my white California extreme photographer jersey that I've already asked the wrestlers to put bloody handprints on because my plan is once the jersey will be retired after that match, I'm going to shadow box frame it and throw it up on my wall it's going to be um, a memorabilia piece that is going to be one of a kind. I actually have another one of a kind um, XPW memorabilia piece. I have a 24 by 36 hostile takeover poster. Only one ever printed. My brother designed it. We printed it out. We took it to Philly to the, that was a 2300 arena, which was ECW arena back then for XPW's first show on the, West, on the East Coast. And we had all the wrestlers sign it. And so it's hanging up on my wall. This shadow box jersey will be hanging right next to it. It's going to be in my living room area. I can't wait. I'm going to frame the the, the birthday card as well. Um, I feel like I'm part of the x family even more now. And um, I beyond appreciate everything they've done for me. And the, the, they allow me to do creatively and, and without any restrictions. Um yeah, this is a one of a kind of experience, one in a lifetime experiences for sure. And anybody who's a wrestling fan, anybody who's a photographer, anybody who's a filmmaker, would cherish these moments, and I cherish them wholeheartedly. And um, that's it. It's uh, it's not the most fun podcast, but it was just informative in some ways. And um, that's it. I'm out of here. I'm guy. I gotta finish packing. I'm heading to Vegas for a seven, eight, nine day trip. Uh, of shooting and my birthday toy drive and everything else and um sayonara and um d- uploading the rest of the pictures i edited to xpw so they have everything to post make music videos with and um that's it peace out and uh i'm uh, renaming this podcast back to king Slivin how it used to be and how it should always have been so thank you very much king and two russians one podcast is still around to dot com you can check either one out, and I'll go to the same place, to this, to this mouth. Alrighty, and peace in the Middle East. Thank, thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Rob, thank you. You're very well. Thank you.